Dear outdoor cooking weather, today we're seasoning a beautiful pork loin, cooking it perfectly on a smoker, and then serving it with a no mayonnaise potato salad. And why? Because we love you. Today's video is sponsored by the National Pork Board, and I'm glad it is because you are going to learn a couple of things, one of which will change the way you cook pork forever, thereby making it absolutely perfect, tender, and juicy. I got that off my chest. People have been ruining pork for years, ladies and gentlemen. Years. And that has to change. And it will change today if you watch which I suppose you are, or you wouldn't be seeing any of this right now. But we're cooking pork tenderloins. It's the filet of the pork world. It's tender, it's lean, it's delicious. And we're gonna make it even deliciouser by putting a rub on it and then smoking it. And yes, I know deliciouser isn't a word. But shall we get going? Let's start with our rub. Into our bowl, we put the following. Smoked paprika chili powder, celery seed, garlic powder, kosher salt, black pepper, and a couple tablespoons of brown sugar. And we mix, of course. Now for the tenderloins. And here's how the pork tenderloin comes. Like this, individually wrapped. They're anywhere from, I'd say, a pound and a quarter to about a pound and a half each. It's perfect for a couple people, maybe even three people. If you think about six ounces each, six times three would be six times eight, 18 ounces. So a pound and a half would be 16 ounces plus another 24. There's enough here for three or four people. They cook fast, they're delicious, they're super lean, and they're fantastic. So here's the deal. You take your package, you will open it up, being extremely careful not to cut yourself, which we've done before and extricate the lovely pork loin from its casing. Just take it out of the packaging, like this. There it is. Then I like to take it, put it in a paper towel, dry it off a bit, and then we have a look at it. And let me scoot these guys that are already back a bit. And here's what you'll notice. You'll notice it's long, it's relatively lean. There is some fat to it and some silver skin. And silver skin is kind of this stuff. Now look, you know that we're fond of saying fat means flavor, so I don't feel the need to take off everything. If you want to trim it down a little bit, this is what you would do. You would take a super sharp knife and you would just start to clean it up. Like maybe this little piece down here at the end, a little bit of this will come off. There you go. Come up here. We say this unnecessary stuff, that comes off. And now look, there's this extra. So if you want to start to do some of this, pull it up, you're welcome to. Look, I know people that don't touch it, they do nothing and they're very happy with it. Extra pieces like here and just start to pull up with your hand and away you go. The silver skin is a little more challenging because you really sort of have to get underneath here. And that would be like this. And then I like to turn it and in a downward motion, just go along and you see you get this piece off, very little of the pork itself, and you're starting to clean it up. So we'll just go a couple more cuts just to give you the idea. And by the way, that's one of the reasons why you want to have a sharp knife. We've said it before, people say dull knives are dangerous, you cut yourself on a dull knife. Never cut myself on a dull knife, cut myself on a sharp knife. But you can't do anything proper in a kitchen when you're cooking with a dull knife. It's just useless. It's like, a, it's like a car with flat tires. You know what I'm saying? It will kind of get you there, but not in a very good way, not properly. So just finish this guy off. Just a couple more of these little guys here. And honestly, that's really about enough for me. I'm fine with all the rest of this. So there you go. And then once they're ready and they're here in front of you, all looking majestic. Now is the time for our rub. I like to give them a little bit of oil and I'm using avocado oil. It's good fat, it doesn't have flavor, smokes at a higher temperature and not that we're cooking these in a wok or anything, but why not? So this will help our rub stick. And once they're all ready, on we go. 
And you can be fairly liberal with this. You just want to make sure that they all get sort of coated. And while they're not really round, they sort of do have sides, so let's go for it. Just like that. I do the ends always. People forget about the ends. And I imagine that the ends are sitting there saying, hey, hey, what about me? I'm down here too. I want a little love. Okay, these guys are ready. Any extra rub that you have, just put in a container, seal it up well, and put it in your pantry. This smells amazing. Use it for whatever you want. But at this point, and before I clean this hand, we're going to use a probe style instant read thermometer to tell us what the temperature of this is as it's cooking. Now remember, I promised a tip that would all but guarantee pork perfection from this moment on. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. You've been overcooking your pork for years. That's just the truth. Up until a short while ago, the government said, cook your pork to 165 degrees to be safe. Well, guess what they say now? Now they say 145 degrees. Oh, wait a second, 20 degrees difference? Yes, 145 degrees. Wait till you see this when it's done. It's gonna be gorgeous and juicy and tender. You're gonna wanna eat the whole thing. So better make a little bit extra, 145 degrees. Oh sure, you could guess when it's ready. You, you, you could do this thing, pushing on your pads of your hand and your fingers and all that kind of stuff. That feels medium rare, no, maybe that's well done, I can't tell. You could do that or you could use an instant read thermometer. And in our case, stand by, I just dropped it. And in our case, and in our case, I'm using a probe type that plugs in to the little box that you set the temperature that you want and it starts screaming at you when it's there. Because why not? Because I could come back every 10 minutes and poke it, but I don't have to if I have one of these. So take one of your tenderloins. We're gonna make a rough assumption here that whatever the reading from one is will be the same in the others. We'll insert the probe. Just write your own little dirty joke there. We'll insert the probe into the thickest part of one of these, not wanting to come out the end. We'll just go right like this and in, good few inches. Now we're ready to go to the smoker. Come on. Alrighty, and here's what we're gonna do. We take them and we lay them down gently. I'll put the one that has the probe in it right in the middle to sort of get the most even temperature. And by the way, I washed my hands before I got over here for anybody who's thinking I'm touching tongs with dirty hands. Mods, we'll close the lid and then we'll set the temperature. And you can see the uh, inside temp of that tenderloin right now, 67 degrees. We wanna set our low alarm. I like to go a couple degrees lower, that's fine. 145 degrees is where we want it. With the volume there and start the timer so we know how long it's going to take. I know it's going to be about 45 minutes and then we're good. Now on to the potato salad. And as you can imagine, our potato salad starts with potatoes. I, I'm using these uh, Yukon Gold style and uh, they will just go into boiling water until they're soft enough, tender enough to push a small knife or a fork into. So carefully, so they don't splash. The other thing that will go on the heat at this point is some bacon. Chopped up into pretty big pieces because, well, because, because a big bite of bacon is gonna be incredible in this. Like a, a bacon bit. Bacon bits? Who was that? Who invented bacon bits? Who's the person that said, I'd like a tiny piece of bacon? I, I don't even want like a million tiny pieces of bacon. Give me fewer giant pieces of bacon, that's what I want. You're gonna have nice chunks of potato in here, nice chunks of celery, red onion. Nice chunk of bacon would be appropriate. So we'll just prep our other uh, veggies and things that go into this. For example, we dice up some celery. Is that not one of the great all-time sounds? 
some red onion. Love red onion. Some parsley. And the next item requires a special implement. Well, technically it doesn't, but I found one that my mother had. I'm dying to use it. And I asked both Max and Jilly if they knew what this was. And neither knew. So before I tell you, just have a good look at it. So it's light. It's clearly aluminum. It's got to be from the 50s, maybe. And it does this. It has a spring mechanism. This returns. What could this be for, Max? Something to do with citrus? You're, you're close in one respect. That it has nothing to do with citrus. <laughs> no, it, the shape, does, is there anything about the shape oh, of any- potatoes. No, what? you're so close. Okay, everybody, if you haven't guessed, and if you have yelled it out loud, this is for cutting eggs. Ah, uh, there you go. Look how great. This goes in. Uh-oh. Like this. Line it up. Ready? <whistles> Boop. <laughs> It's amazing. And I have something like it that I use. It's called a knife. But I guess in the 40s, they <laughs> couldn't, 50s, they couldn't figure out. Anyway, I don't want to put these in yet because I do want them to look beautiful. So we're going to end up stirring everything and I will add the eggs at the last minute. We'll just do a couple more. It's pretty fun, actually. I have to say, sometimes when you do it with a knife, it just doesn't come out beautiful. These are absolutely gorgeous. These are picture perfect egg slices. Oh God, he says as one breaks, has to be eaten. So the potatoes are cooking. We could check them and see how they are. So they're probably gonna take a half an hour and, oh, well, they're, they're, I mean, it's sort of getting there. So there's maybe another 15 or so there. Check our bacon. These big giant pieces are coming along beautifully. Wow, they're gonna be really noticeable. Lovely. When the potatoes finish, let's make our dressing. All right, but before we get to that, let's just take the bacon off because I can see it's clearly gorgeous and ready. Look at that. You know it's going to be fantastic in the salad. Fantastic. And the dressing goes like this. Red wine vinegar. Olive oil. Dijon mustard, garlic, finely chopped chives. Oh, chives cute. A little white sugar, kosher salt and pepper. And we mix. Yum. And we taste. Tiny bit sweet, but a lot tangy. That's really good. That's going to help this whole thing. Potatoes are ready. So let's take those guys out. OK, so the potatoes were drained. I ran them in a little cool water to, to try and stop most of the cooking. They're still a little bit warm, which is good because they will accept the dressing beautifully, which sounds like a silly thing to say. But now we just want to cut these guys into bite-sized pieces because who can eat that? Mm, certainly not me. But we want this to be a fairly hearty salad, right? Nothing light skimpy about this. I mean, it's not for lumberjacks or anything, but let's make this a nice salad. And the skins, honestly, one of my favorite parts. Just leave them alone. Unless you do not like skin. And then you could have peeled them before you boiled them. Or they'll peel now sort of quite nicely like this. See what's happening? But the fact that they're partly coming off that there will be some skin pieces in here, for me, that's a beautiful thing. And clearly they're starting to cool down even more. And when we're done, we'll just take them and put them in the bowl with the rest of our stuff like this. Now we'll put some dressing on and give it a lovely toss. So don't do too much yet. You can always add, can't take it out. But the fact that this is warm I mean, imagine like you have a cut in your finger. You put that finger into vinegar, it's gonna hurt because the vinegar goes in. 
Well, the potatoes are warm and the dressing goes in and that was maybe the worst analogy I've ever made in my life. That being said, you thought I was forgetting the bacon. Oh, I wasn't forgetting. We're now adding it. Watch. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. The bacon, of course, is gonna give the flavor and it's gonna give that color difference that is not already in this salad. But it's also gonna give crunch. I mean, look at that. That is one beautifully gorgeous salad. It really is. Better have one little taste first, right, Max? Yuck, you have to taste to find out if something's ready. You have to taste to find out if something's seasoned properly. So try and get a little onion, try and get a little potato, and You know what's missing? Mayonnaise, and I don't care. Do you know, more people die every year because of mayonnaise that's gone bad at picnics than do from shark attacks? Okay, I actually just made that up. And, and apparently, since mayonnaise is, I don't know, since they started doing something to it a few years ago, people aren't really getting sick from mayonnaise that sits out in the heat, maybe. But the idea of warm, clumpy mayonnaise at a picnic outside is horrifying to me. This is what you want to take. <gasps> the eggs. Okay, we'll do the eggs at the end. I still don't want to, I still don't want to, you know, mush them up too much. Please don't let me forget the eggs. Please? Thank you. Okay. Salad. Done. Pork loins. Finishing beautifully. We got about 15 degrees to go. But there will be a sauce that we will, we will put on these things and dip into and luxuriate in. And the sauce looks like this. This is super simple. We'll start with Granny Dijon mustard, like that. We'll add a little soy, like that. A drizzle of honey, like that. Oh, hello there. A little salt and pepper, always. And our final ingredient, some cayenne pepper, and we mix. You're gonna like this. A lot, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is great, but what makes pork so great, especially these, 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 these little pork tenderloins, is they're essentially a blank canvas. They can become whatever you want. You want them sweet, you can make them sweet. You want them spicy, fiery in your mouth, you, you can do that. They're really anything you want them to be. They're like the perfect partner. You know, before you start dating, you're imagining what your perfect partner would be. They'd be tall, they'd be this, they'd have that kind of personality, they'd have that color hair, they'd, they'd smile, they'd laugh, that kind of thing. That's pork. <laughs> That's a silly analogy too, but it really is, because you can make it anything you want. It takes the flavors. You wanna make a Greek pork thing? You add thyme and, and oregano and lemon and garlic. You wanna go Asian? You do, you do hoisin and, and, and soy sauce and sesame oil. You wanna go uh, French? Well, just to get some attitude and then talk to your pork that way. That was me and I apologize to the French. It's not what I meant. I meant make a beautiful Bernay sauce. Perfectly uh, sautéed uh, small medallions of uh, pork in the pan on the plate with the Bernay sauce over the top. And attitude. Love the you French. Love the French. But that's the thing. It's there for you. And it's easy there for you. Look, we're taking an hour to, to smoke these. But a piece of pork tenderloin in a, in, a, in a wok, boom, like that. You've got a stir fry. Quickly done on the grill, no time at all. It's there. I'm ready to eat. Okay, I'm gonna clean up. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean up a little bit. And then we eat. You good? Because I'm good. It's gonna be better in a minute. And we're there. Look, the magic number, 145. Let's take them off. Look at... Just you wait, wait till you see what happens here. Let's take them off. 
Hello, gorgeous. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll observe a three minute rest period. But while we do, that little sauce we made, we'll paint it on. <laughs> oh, please. Please don't toy with my emotions. So what's gonna happen now, just like that warm potato salad, inviting in the dressing, this little sauce will help glaze. The flavor will get pulled in. It'll glisten a bit, it'll make it sticky a bit. And these will be a sight to behold and to devour. Because we're here for eating, not just for looking. And if you thought that waiting period for the tenderloins to finish on the smoker was difficult to sit through, the next two minutes are gonna be near impossible. We'll let them just finish resting just a tiny bit more. Uh, and now we'll start to plate. So we'll get our potato salad. And I realized almost this entire video, I've been saying potato salad. That's what my father used to say. I know it ends in an O. Yes, I'm from Canada. We can speak and spell and pronounce potato salad, not potato. My dad was a bit odd. Okay, look, I put the eggs in. It's gorgeous. Really, it's a gorgeous salad. And I know there are those of you when the bacon was cooking that were thinking, Sam, those pieces are gonna be way too big. Ha, hello everyone, look. No, not too big. Perfect, just right. So we'll put some right here. We'll try and get an egg on top right there. Perfect position. Thank you. Little red onion. There we go. Now for the star. Move for a second, salad. And now for the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Say hello to my little friend. Wow. You can smell right here this gorgeous glaze that's on top. But what's important right now is how it looks inside and how it tastes. So let's give it a, a nice little cut. And we always want to cut against the grain. And in a tenderloin like this, it's easy. It goes lengthwise. They're long, the grain goes long. So you cut this way and you're gonna be fine. So one cut looks like this. Ready? There. What, did you see that? Do you see that juice? I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh. There's a tiny bit of pink here. And you know what? People are gonna go, no, you can't do that, Sam. Yes, you can. That's 145 degrees. It's glistening. Does that come through on your camera, Max? Hell yeah. Glistening. Sam, I don't like dry pork. Well, guess what? I just fixed it for you. Fixed it perfectly. Let's have a bite. I don't know if you... It was just dripping. Oh my God. Okay. The first thing that hits you is how tender it is. How juicy it is. The second thing you get, you get the rub that it was smoked with. You get the smoke from the smoke. It's pretty obvious. But now this, this little bit spicy glaze from the cayenne, the, 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 the honey, just, oh, look at that. Do you see that color? Look at it dripping. There's nothing artificial here. No filter, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know, there couldn't be a filter for dripping, but do you see what's happening? Do you see this? This is ridiculous. Ridiculously good. Um, mm. Wait, here's what's really nuts. The USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, through their own analysis, has determined that there is less fat in a serving of this tenderloin, well, pork tenderloin in general, versus the same size serving of chicken. You wanna know what's messed up with that? Do you? What's the expression? Guy's fat as a pig. What? Not anymore. Shouldn't the expression be as fat as a chicken? I mean, I'm just saying. Now let me cut some because we must, we must complete this plate. Oh, jeez Louise. Look at, see, do you see this color? That's, 
that's the way it should be. This is proper. You know, pure white means, hey, guess what? You've overdone it, folks. Someone, please, somebody, please help me here. And there you go. Let's think about what we've done here. We've created a ridiculously delicious, super tender, super flavorful pork tenderloin on the smoker. Oh, by the way, we pulled it off at an hour. It got to 145 degrees after an hour. It's not a long time. That's what you want, ladies and gentlemen, that. Don't let your friends tell you anything different. Here's what you say. You say, Sam the Cooking Guy, the National Pork Board, tell me this is the exact perfect way to cook pork. Have I ever lied to you about anything? No. The term nailed it comes to mind. Okay, so I just picked up this plate to have a bite, and this happened. Look, generally not like the most attractive thing. You wouldn't want to show that, but I'm showing it for a reason. Because it's juicy as all get out. Which unfortunately, the way a lot of people cook pork, hopefully up until today, is not the case. It's not juicy. It's pure white, like a sheet of paper, and it's dry as toast. And hey, if you want toast, make toast, but don't ruin a piece of pork to get toast. What I really like about pork is its versatility. And I don't mean just, oh, you can take six pork tenderloins and put different toppings on them and cook them in the oven or the smoker. I mean the different things you can do with a piece of pork tenderloin like this. Like what you're asking, Sam? Oh, I don't know. How about grilling slices of the tenderloin and putting it on top of coleslaw to make a delicious pork tenderloin slider? Or putting sauce on a tortilla, caramelized onions, tenderloin that's been cooked on the flat top, and grilled pineapple for a ridiculously good taco. Or an amazing pork tenderloin empanada with caramelized onions and smoked Gouda cheese. Look. Talk about versatile. Oh my goodness. These are insane. But talk about versatile. A tenderloin really is the little black dress of the pork world. Look, let me explain. Little black dress can, can be appropriate someplace fancy, uh, as can a tenderloin. Or it can be dressed down a little bit more casual, as can a tenderloin. It has many faces, as does this tenderloin. I'd like to say thank you to the National Pork Board for sponsoring this. We've learned a lot today. We've learned that we cook our pork to 145 degrees. It's versatile, it's quick to cook, it's easy, it's delicious, it can take on many, many different faces. <laughs> All so delicious. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us. Hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and comment. You guys comment like crazy. All right, go away. Make all of this, eat more pork.